Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 23 of Sustainable Builders Yak podcast, the podcast that gives you the confidence to build high-performing, sustainable homes. We'd first like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Simon Clark from Sustainable Homes Melbourne. Good day, Simon. How are you? Hey, Brian. I'm well. Good to be back. You got a good one today, mate. We, we got an absolute on. ripper for people today. All stuff. Okay, so let's get the, um, the sponsors out of the way first. Uh, today's pod podcast is sponsored by founding sponsors sustainability victoria and proclaim australia and our gold sponsors fantech and bink now as i said today folks we have an absolute ripper we have the esteemed extremely hard to get a hold of man or carl hansen <laughs> founder and ceo of carbon light a man who needs no introduction i'm sure but we will give it to him good morning burkhardt and welcome to the podcast no pressure then. No pressure. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Matt. You are a hard man to track me. down. Yeah, mm. I know. That's that's. Uh, I've been told that many times, but um, <laughs> I generally don't spend more than fifteen minutes at any given place. You know, so just keep moving. <laughs> well, we've got you for at least an hour, maybe maybe yeah. more. We've you so, in. <clears throat> Trust me, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna put it out there. Um, I know I'm like a kid on Christmas today, and I'm sure if Ham was here, he'd be the same. Um, you are the goat in the industry when it comes to pass the post. <laughs> oh oh but, my god, it, that is insane. Oh, uh, it's the <laughs> truth, Matt. Let's just call it what it is. Like, if, if we're talking, if you were in AFL, you'd be Buddy Franklin, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like the sound of that. No, yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate right. that. Just sort of so, folks, a little bit, a little bit about Burkhardt. Um, Burkhardt is the founding director of Carbon Light and arguably the most experienced pass post builder in Australia. Um, I'd like to think I'm in the top 10 there somewhere too, to be honest. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> He's a licensed master builder and a certified passive house tradesperson with two decades experience in passive house construction and uh, precision prefabrication, which is what we're going to concentrate on today. As a master craftsman, Burkhardt has extensive professional experience. having worked in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Denmark, New Zealand, Spain, and probably many more places as well that's not listed on here. Emigrated to Melbourne in 2011 and probably at the moment, I would say you're highly regarded as the leader in Australia and the figure at the forefront of energy efficiency, efficient construction. You've proved that several times already. Um, one of the first certified trainers to deliver Passive House Tradesperson course and currently teaches a Passive House course at the Box Hill Institute in Melbourne, which you've delivered hundreds of Passive House builders, myself and Ham included. So thank you for that. You've set us on the course to where we are today. Um, you've developed Australia's first Passive House Certified Construction System being Panelite, which is what we're going to talk about today. Congratulations on that. And I think one of your, your biggest achievements, I don't know if you think so, but we, I do. I think that your uh, Telstra Best Business Awards for Sustainability this year was an absolute groundbreaking achievement. Well done, mate. To you. Yeah, and that was good. Fantastic. That was a good night. Yeah, that was an well absolute done. ripper. So, yeah, I would say without a doubt, you are the goat in the industry, Matt. So let's get stuck into this. Um, let's start Can off with a bit about you we... and your yeah. Can I ask just a quick question before we start? Are you, yeah. you recording this, right? Yeah. So people can watch, watch this We're as well. On. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just wondering well, if there, when you speak, watch it, will, no. there be, will, will there be, you know, sort of subtitles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, uh, yeah. We've had that. <laughs> <first. laughs> How are we going to work that out? <laughs> oh, they'll just, just have to figure it out and listen back to it four or five times. Yeah. yeah. Until they get it right. <laughs> Slow it you down. Could, I would slow the speed down. Yeah, well done. Yeah, no, okay. No, sorry about that. Let's go. This is a okay. serious podcast. Come on. So, uh, oh, it's not that serious. Uh, <laughs> let's start off with a little bit about yourself, Burkhardt. Let's talk about you and your past. So, um, where you came from, your family, a little bit about your past, and how did you end up in Melbourne? Oh, man, this, this, um, how much time have we got on this? This, this is a long, weird story. Um, I was born and born and raised in, in Germany, and, um, I remember when I was 11 years old and I saw carpenters on the roof and I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I was very lucky like that. So I knew... You wanted to be a project it, manager? Uh, no, yeah. No, I, wanted to, <laughs> I, I knew I just going to be a labourer. No, I knew I wanted to be... I saw the carpenters in Germany. They've got the traditional outfits on. I saw them up on the roof and I went, that's what I'm going to do with my life. And, you know, so growing up and then running through the apprenticeship system and then never really looked back i've never done anything but that you know so um i worked in different businesses in denmark and and germany um you know i just really became from interested to developing a, a 
severe obsession with prefabrication efficiency uh, and building physics and how you know very simple good buildings can can change people's lives it can make you know make people's lives better it was insane that we had projects where um what their parents had a child very sick couldn't couldn't really do anything i mean almost allergic to life almost you know dog mm. hair dust flowers grass anything you name it and then allergy to uv rays and whatnot like it, it was just basically um you know sentenced to live inside and 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 we just built a really good, nice passive house with an indoor playground and whatnot. It was insane. And that was it. The kit was perfectly fine inside. So even when they, they were playing outside, there's a random story, but we're playing outside and start getting unwell, getting the house recovers within minutes. Just build well. Like there was no magic there. And I went, this is what I'm going to do with my life. So that, that was that. That was sort of turning moments. And then there is a tradition in Germany where you can go on a journey for three years and one day to to master your your craft. So you ha- you are not allowed to go home in, within that period. And you you maybe you've seen them in Europe. You know that the uh, journeyman, the traditional yeah, yeah. traveling yeah. carpenters. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. And I, 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 <clears throat> wow. I, left, I and I didn't go home for like four so, years. What what's well, that? So, I, I, I was one in the mid seventies, was it? No, no, it's still alive today. It's one of the <laughs> oldest uh, oldest traditions. Yeah, it is. It, yeah. It's, I've heard it, of it. Um, yeah, I think there's, um, it's about 800 years old. So you just, after your apprenticeship, you just, um, you you can go wherever you want to go. Um, you're not having, you don't have any phone, you don't have a car, you don't, you don't even take public transport, you just hitchhike everywhere, it's insane. So it was complete and utter freedom. And I just traveled around as the carpenter and you always wear your traditional gear. I mean, if you look it up, you look at uh, traveling carpenters or journeymen, You'll see them in their in their flared pants and the black black hats and mm. so there's a lot of history in there and a lot of pride in your job in your trade and you go from place to place. I worked a lot in southern Germany in Austria and Switzerland that area, really traditional carpentry and it was insane. And it was the best time that I had done there, and I learned so much because you not just the your you the, the different ways of building things. You always have to find different solutions to different problems, adapt to different areas, different climates, and different you know circumstances. A lot of snow, no snow, a lot of wind, then um, uh, or whatever that may be. Um, and, and different uh, people you, too. Like your life skills, right? You yeah. know, so yeah, you just have to fit in. Like, and then I became, I became pretty decent at carpentry, you know, because I had in a very short time very. A lot of experience but i was still very young so i would then go to businesses the amount of confidence i'd had at the time was insane so i would mm-hmm. just rock up no cv i didn't have a cv till i think i arrived here in australia <laughs> i just didn't have one i just would rock up and say good day guys um i'm gonna i'm gonna work for you and here's how we're gonna do this like you just engage me for 30 days you don't have to pay me if if in 30 days you don't believe that I'm the best in the business here in the carpentry, then fire me. You don't owe me anything. But if you do, you pay me back at the highest wage that you've got in the business. Oh. They, had, they had nothing to lose. And they said yes every time. So I started wow. and I had, I had 30 days. I just needed an opportunity and, and sort of duck deep from there. So That's called anyway, backing that, yourself in, isn't it? Whew. Yeah. Like I just said to, you know, but you had to integrate into a team often they were a lot older than me and mm. here comes this random young person and i just had to work them into the ground and 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 i did and so then, then you kind of progress with that and you become respected through your work i guess um you don't need to talk you just need to deliver yeah so anyway that there's a lot of that we need to catch up for for beer yeah. first to, to go more of those stories if yeah, yeah, yeah. we're not limited for time but then um i eventually um, made it to New Zealand and we arrived in New Zealand. I didn't speak a word of English, not a none. Like I, it, it was insane. So the, the Kiwis really taught me that someone picks you up again, full carpentry gear, which seems really strange over here. Yeah. yeah. And someone went like, Oh yeah. Well, so what are you, the you know, so Amish people or you strippers or what, what is the <laughs> story here? <laughs> but you just get in touch. And they, uh, they, some of one couple took us in. They took us, me and my travel mate, 
they took us in their house and said, all oh, right, so what are we going to do? We, I had no English. So they, we built like a cinema room where did bit, different bits and pieces needed to go. And they went with a, we stapled things from a card game into different spots. So we knew the order of things, right? You know, so like <laughs> it, up in numbers, so because we couldn't liaise and every night they would sit down and drag out like three words of English out of me till then eventually I learned English in three months. Yeah, you know, wow. because I just I was here and I, I I wanted it. I wanted it so badly, and then eventually I ended up in uh, going to Australia and uh, worked in Queensland for eight months, which was for it just happened to be for my now wife's uncle at the time. So we're then traveling down the coast and to saying flying out from Adelaide, and he said, "Oh, if you if you go to Adelaide, you should go and see my sister." <laughs> it's it's just so random and we only booked adelaide flights back because they were the cheapest one you know i mean like the la life is so random yeah, yeah. yeah and that's what i did so i knocked on the door and uh i uh met my very beautiful very kind better much smarter better half and we moved to <laughs> we moved to europe within like three months we moved in together we lived in the highlands of scotland uh man and it was so dark and so cold i don't know how humans sustain over there like it's it's that's i don't know and then we it's we bleak beauty over there isn't it uh, if you travel through just don't <laughs> stop though if you live there it's a very different story man you're just battling the elements but yeah. it is without a doubt it's the most stunning country yeah, and it's absolutely incredible and we worked up in the highlands we were north north you know like really mm. we should see the northern lights and then, um, yeah, we packed our bags and traveled through Europe and arrived with a backpack in, in Australia. And here we are. Wow. I, so, sorry, yeah. Bob, before we move on, I've got to touch on this. I've just typed into Google Burkhardt Hanson Traveling Carbon and I can't find a photo. You need to get a photo <laughs> up. Yeah. No, I'll shoot Google it's... over this. I won't like, took it, take it off. <laughs> Ty uh, type in can... Burkhardt Hanson Journeyman, see what comes up. Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 or just Journeyman. Those, yeah. Um, I said you got some photos. Yeah, so is, um, Burkhardt is I heard um I had a beer with uh um Airboss Dan. And mm. This the journeyman came up and he gave me quite a bit of information. I absolutely love it. I think it's incredible. I'm not sure whether he was a journeyman or not, but he explained. I don't think he was. Yeah, I'm pretty no, I was I don't blown away it's, by it. It's only what like one percent of people do it, one percent of all carpenters do it. Yeah, and not even everyone finishes it. A lot of people start no, no. to see no. it through. That's yeah, amazing. I it. I'd love to. It, I, that. I loved it. You are out yeah. and about. You have only got one set of clothes. It's so rare, uh, raw and basic, but it, and you rely on people's kindness, you know. So, and and you realize that there is a lot of kindness in the world. It's it's yeah. it was just so good, and it was complete freedom. Like I was found when I chose to be found, when I got in touch with people. You know, those were different times mm. as well. You remember the old internet cafe? You had yeah, to go yeah. in. Yeah, mm. yeah, those were the times. So there was times. It, it, I'm a parent now. My son, it's my son's birthday today. Um, mm. Happy birthday. He, yeah, oh, thanks. Wow. Um, party time tonight. That's going to be good. <laughs> but it, 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 I realize now how much pain and grief I must have caused my parents because there was times when and I was wild at the time, you know, like it, the when when they wouldn't hear from me for three months, so I was assumed dead, you know, because they had no <laughs> way of finding out where I was, and then they you would call them and go, "All right, you all right?" And they go, "Holy man, oh, I can't swear on this guy." They went like, "What? <laughs> where were you?" And I went, "Oh, and now I'm in Switzerland, or like I'm in Spain, or something random," and it, they didn't yeah. hear from me three for three months. Imagine that now. Imagine your kids doing that to oh, you. Oh, man, there'd be a cord orange. Yeah, yeah. it's just, I'll, I'll find him. I'll track him down, you know. Yeah. I'll insert a tracker under their skin or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a beer conversation. Let's move on a little bit or we're yeah. going to be here for Come two on, days. Move on. Yeah. All right. So, look, um, just really quickly, if we can, Burkhardt, can you tell us? So, when you, let's skip New Zealand and let's just skip straight to Australia. When you arrived here, like, can you just point out, like, because I got some shocks when I got here first. The major differences between Europe and here in Australia when you got here, with major construction difference. type, the major difference. Oh, okay. What what hit was, you hardest? I was going to say. I was going to say uh, the 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 beer, the bread, and the sausage. You know, yeah. like we, 
We've got to import that. <laughs> Not what you <laughs> miss. <laughs> What's the difference? Major differences there. But yeah. in, construction, in construction, let's stick to construction. In, in construction, it, it was insane to see that the, the climate here is not vastly different to northern uh, uh, central europe yeah really yeah, the, I would agree. The, the, the winter here is milder and the summer is a bit hotter yeah but but the the vast majority of the year it's still cold and it's still hot yeah it's pretty much the same but there was a complete absence from of, of building physics man there was like no one cared like it was just I was just put back in time into the to the wild west, you know, where people just put this frame together. I remember when I started working for this guy, I made it through one week before I quit. I went like, "That's insane." He sent me out to the side to start install windows, and I went, "Yep, no worries." Right, and I'll get myself ready. Where's the, where's the, you know, the spray foam, and where's this tapes, yeah. and, the, where the, <laughs> and the glass suckers, and lifting gear. No. And, he go, and he looks at me going like, what is the matter with you? I thought you were a carpenter. And I went, <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, and um, I'll get to a side and you have like 2.4 meter sliding doors you can lift by yourself. In it goes with the timber reveal, aluminium, single glazed, yeah. couple of nails through the reveal. Who cares? It was insane. So there was there was zero effort to, to seal anything or or even the, the, the main consideration is physics. I mean, you can't d- dispute physics, can you? Like that's that's insane. Yeah, but that's when you say you can't dispute <clears throat> physics. I, I don't think it was that the industry didn't care. I think there's a huge lack of education. Yeah, people didn't understand. Yeah. I, I think no, that, no, there's a big difference stupid. there. Yeah, it's not stupidity. It's it's just not it's just no awareness of it. It's a lack of knowledge. Nah, no, no awareness. Is. Like I, I'm yeah. a carpent. I did my carpentry apprenticeship in Australia, and I can tell you the shit that I look back on. I remember. Yeah. The, the, your boss wanted us to put in, you know, we didn't have even proper nails. We, you know, you never put in windows with nails anymore, but we're using framing nails one, you know, once upon a time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give the painter something to do there. Come oh, on. my God. Like the Senko, Paslode ones you pull apart, you know, like, God. Yeah, yeah but if you did that now, you're a cowboy. You're an oh, absolute, absolute cowboy. cowboy. Now, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, horrible. Out the gear. See, see the, the concerning <laughs> thing is that what has changed? Like the, the, my apprentices, they go off and they, you know, one of my young guys said the other day, he goes, oh, I don't actually know what would happen if I would leave carbon light because where would I, where would I go? I can't, he, you know, someone switched the lights on. He can't go and build conventional mm-hmm. because he knows fundamentally wrong. But mm-hmm. at the same time, there is so many, the, 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 the apprentices that are running, running through the system now, they do the exact same frame the exact same window install, like, yes, there's maybe a little bit more detail to it, but there is still no requirement or no no course or no section in the apprenticeship that you kind of say, right, you need to actually seal this up or warm yeah. surface, cold surface, here's the insulation, here's a bit of, you know, or d- diffusion open on one side, airtight on the other side. There's none of that. And we're, we're miles away from this because I've been there. I've been to these to the trade schools i've yeah. actually said i've come in i'll do this for free and it's the the young the, the young kids that they pick it up they don't care yeah they, we do the same the membrane here put a membrane there otherwise <laughs> you know condensation that they that they go yep no worries but there is a cheaper. seismic shift coming though burkhardt i have to say it. Yeah. the amount of builders that care about this now because risk and liability is a huge factor and well, yeah, you'd have to, right? It, it's, it's huge. So builders are paying attention. And by default, all of these young carpenters coming through. Like yeah. if you look at where we were five years ago, oh, may, maybe yeah. like such a small, minute amount of builders that were doing this. But yeah. you look now, it's everywhere. It's all over the internet, everywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah but, but you know, we've, got, we've got a bit of an echo chamber though, Brian. You know, I, I think it's, there's definitely a shift, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's seismic. It's it, But the awareness is, still growing it's just i don't know man i i don't know when we what, look at the pre-manufactured what, industry phew. yeah 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 no granted but burkhart saying like do they teach you know, about air tightness and you know vapor permeability and no you know, but what they are doing in, like, in trade school like that, that's no, the sort so, of thing that they should be when i said awareness shift, we're, we're at the front end of this burkhart you will notice so i'm i'm on a panel for tafe so that's <clears> tafe here in western australia yeah and this is coming so mm. we're currently working on the new syllabus to include all these items. Yeah. So oh, uh, no doubt. Look, I, I'm, I'm yeah. not being negative here. I, I, I understand. Like even ten years ago, 
So when we started, there wasn't even membranes in the country, right? Like Thomas <laughs> yeah. from, from, from yeah, Germany. We were importing them from shipped, Germany. Yeah. Shipped it from New Zealand with yeah. little rulers in it, you know. And <laughs> um, so we've come a long way. But yeah. my concern is, and that's my fundamental belief, is that we have to move like a, a, a dramatic, dramatically different direction before the end of the decade. Otherwise, it's irrelevant what we build, passive house or conventional, because the, the planet will be on fire or underwater or both. You know, yeah. so the, the, the science guides us and tells us we must act really decisively here. And when I there's there's a lot of talk. So it's not that I'm trying to be negative. I'm just it's so impatient with this. Yeah. You know, I said like we, we could do more, more, more. We've got to drive because if we if we really we, we need to fix this thing, you know, and we need to go. We got to fix this now. <laughs> there's no there's no time to wait on this. I would anyway, we're, look. No question I, I, two, aren't we? It's going well. Yeah, yeah, we're doing really well, man. We're only twenty <laughs> minutes in. Um, all, all I would say is that we can drive, but if we drive too fast, we're going to end up with leaky building syndrome and all kinds of issues. Like, I think we yeah. need to drive, but we need to drive correctly, right. and that's going to be a bit of a patience right. game. Like risk mitigation. So the way you build in your your panels, which is my next question, and it's the way we build as well. Um, yeah. I, I don't know how many times I've said this, but I kind of phrase, uh, "We're not reinventing the wheel; we're just changing the tire." So take yeah. Australian standards, you know, revamp them, upgrade them so that we get high performance. Uh, right, I'll... just, just you, you've mentioned leaky building syndrome. I, like, I think it'd be great to get you and Burkhardt's insight into the, the risks well, of that. I know that we're taking a bit of a detour, but I think that's really, really important. That could save a lot, hell of a lot of builders. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in, in short, in short, <laughs> leaky building syndrome was most prominent in North America and New Zealand. Millions and millions and millions, billions of dollars worth of damage where homes had to be destroyed, essentially, yeah. because there was membranes put on those buildings that was not vapor permeable. And the building essentially sweated on the inside of that membrane. And the type of pine that they used in particular, so they used radiated pine in New Zealand, which was a disaster. The, the homes rotted much quicker. So essentially, the homes were rotten from the inside out, but you couldn't see it. So people were unhealthy. Asthma is now a huge issue in New Zealand because of this. So leaky building syndrome was essentially building sweating from the inside out. And Burkhard, jump in and correct me whenever you want. But No, no, it's 100%. Yep. That's, that's essentially what it is. So you got all this moisture, which was a breeding ground for mold inside the structure. Buildings rotting from the inside out. Hugely unhealthy and dangerous living environments. And then the National Construction Code's changed quite quickly to try and you know combat this but the fallout was huge absolutely yeah. huge you see and, this you know the this, the the day-to-day -day practice now is changing um but i still see new builds being built today with that silver sacking on the outside you know and like it's 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 a complete closed layer that has no ability to transfer any uh, moisture to the outside and and you know mm -hmm. some of those membranes have got their holes pierced into them for to make them breathable, yeah. which is insane. But then it, it's open for water transfer again. So it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a ticking massive ticking time bomb. And the difference is now at the time back back then in the, Europe was the same. Built, Europe had this demand to build more energy efficient, and we try and we started sealing buildings. That, yeah. that, that was the first logical step to stop leakages but we used the wrong components and caused fix one issue but then uh, uh, cr created another yeah which was m m almost more dramatic than than the the first problem but then they pressed pause and went back to the um to the institutes and we actually figured out kind of like what is this what's causing this right back to physics so you, yeah yeah back to physics you can't dispute physics so you you just kind of figure out what is actually happening inside the wall in different climates with different temperatures. And from there on in, let, let physics and facts guide us to the right answer. It's not about marketing or what membrane or what material or what yeah, brand. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Is, is it open or is it not open? You know, that will it let water in or will it not? So yeah, that, and that's, that's the simple answer membrane. there is class. What class is your membrane? That That's the simple yeah. answer. Is it one, yeah. two, three, or four? And yeah. like we all know, it needs to be at minimum three or four right now. Yeah. And at the moment, I see where the National Construction Code is going. Whether it's too slow or not, I don't know. But personally, I think it's too slow. But I also see the risk mitigation as well. If we're going to increase the performance, then we need to bring the physics along with it. And we need, like we see five, six, sorry, 
six, seven, and eight, it's class mm. three or four. But mm. four and five, was, which is basically, the, you know, the, the largest habitable area in Australia, mm. is still wide open. And until that code mm. changes, it's going to be it's going to be this issue. But we have we're chasing seven stars, and exactly as Jeremy, Jeremy was just on Undercover Architect, and he said the exact same, the exact thing what everybody's doing. Oh, we need to get there, pump in more insulation. But mm. if you're pumping in more insulation, you're changing the dynamic of a wall structure and you're changing yeah. the, the dynamic of moisture passage through that structure. So where yeah. is your dew point? Yeah. But then you're creating, you're, you're injecting a sponge really in the wall. You exactly. Know, you're, 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 you're creating a, a, a component that, that can absorb moisture and can hold more moisture. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's a, a really massive issue, but at the t- same time, it really... Relatively simple fix, really. If we this is not rocket science, and I've been talking to Burkhima for a long time about this. Can we have like can we paralyze. have a two minute video <laughs> that just shows moisture passage through a structure and what happens when it's shit and what happens when it's good? Yeah, like I think I a did... two minute video like that, you know, like passive house in sixty seconds. Let's do moisture passage in sixty seconds. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's... Yeah, you bring it back down to the basics, and then yeah, um, yeah. Anyway. And and just to clarify, the basics are correct me if I'm wrong. It would be a vapor permeable membrane, yeah, and, or and or a ventilated cavity, yeah. Which Mate, look, I, I, most of those problems. My 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 view on this is that, um, like any other product, um, that you that anyone is selling, it has to be safe, right? So. For me to sleep sleep well at night and let someone move into the home that we delivered for them, it needs to be insulated well, so I don't have any cold surfaces. It needs to be sealed well and, and correctly with the correct membrane, so it's diffusion open on the outside and airtight on the inside. It needs to be glazed well, so I don't have condensation on the windows or again cold surfaces, and it needs to be ventilated well. So yeah. that th- these are the things you mustn't under no circumstances. Uh, uh, muck around with now if you go to passive house or you just get it done well so there is no mold or condensation i don't really care that's not everyone has got the budget to go all the way or can be bothered or whatever yeah. it is but the the baseline of any home has to be health like there's mm. no way around this they, they, otherwise you should go to jail mm. it's ridiculous <laughs> like, like there'd like, be a lot that. going to jail there's the german coming out and you know <laughs> <laughs> But go imagine this anywhere else. Imagine you go, you 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 build a car and it's got a faulty airbag. Remember we had this in VW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You go to jail. Yeah. Mass, massive recall, or you yeah. do something that's unsafe for the planet, where they marked around with the with the emissions yeah. on their car, yeah. Yeah. or the seatbelt, the brakes don't work. You were going like this. Could it doesn't mean that it immediately causes harm to them, but it could cause harm to the user, and and, and that is completely unacceptable. So because you crash and you will die and in, in a house, you die a slower, more painful death, I guess. But either way, <laughs> whoever is responsible for this has to be held accountable and has to fix this. And we can't keep pointing fingers and going, oh, well, the building surveyor signed off on that. Or the engineer did this, you know, and all the, the, the designer did this. Ultimately, you are putting this thing in. You hand over the key. So you man up, you know. So you are responsible. Gender neutral. You person up yeah <laughs> so listen go. what my only comment with all of that and again we need to move on because we're going to end up with two podcasts here which is not a bad oh thing yeah <laughs> so, that's what i did last time the, the one thing i would say here is we're at a critical juncture in australia at the moment mm-hmm. we've, we've got we've got all the tools we need to get us to a very very good solution we know that. Like we've talked about this so many times. We're we're in the kitchen, we're baking a cake at the moment, but we already have the recipe. We already know yeah. what the cake should look like. We don't need to fuck up four cakes in the process before we get there. And that's my that's my worry at the moment is that risk mitigation from where we are right now, and forget about us. We know that we're already there. We've been doing this for years. We can't like we need to consider the industry as a whole. How do we grab all of this? Because we're like such a small percentage of the industry. Mm. In, in comparison to what's actually being built how do we get all these guys that are on the bottom end well sorry that's the wrong phrase that are producing <laughs> the majority of homes yeah. how do we get them to where we started seven or eight years ago you know what I mean yeah. Yeah. just See, providing basic health in a building with no risk yeah. how do we do that 
I think that they're, 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 what we're finding ourselves in right now is like the perfect shitstorm that's been brewing for <laughs> for a few years. Yeah, you know, wrong, so though. so we've got we've got an industry that firstly is is responsible for like forty five percent of carbon emissions. That's insane. So that's a low hanging fruit that we must pull as a bigger picture. If yeah, we yeah. don't fix this, we're all going to go down. So that yeah. that has to be rectified first thing. Then, then we've got a volume building industry that produces again about forty five or fifty percent of all homes. It's yeah. them. Yeah. Um, so they're the heavy hitters. They're the de- delivering. They run over. They're building at about one to three percent profit margin, and it's a really cutthroat industry. So yeah. financially, they're not viable. They're not. They're they're not sustainable. And their system or their setup is broken. We've seen this now where they're hitting the wall. That's because we had one price increase after COVID. So that's that's a that's a good thing here. We can we can work with that. Then mm. we've got this severe labor shortage, mm. right? Which and that is not just labor shortage, and that is that is also skilled labor shortage. People that yeah. can actually do this, which is a bigger problem. So right. So imagine you would need highly skilled mechanics. And everyone had to be amazing. Sorry to bring up the cars here. That's a German in me. Yeah. Right? So you would have to have amazing mechanics and everyone comes to your driveway with all the parts and b- builds your Tesla in your driveway. It would be insane because yeah. you would need this person to be incredible. And on on its A game, on her, her or his A game um, at all the time. So it's completely unsustainable to work that way. So we have to do... Um, sorry, before uh, next, uh, before I move on, there's also no skills, uh, sorry, no labor coming in. I had one of the big builders saying this to me the other day. We're just going to wind it down a bit and wait till trades come back. Like, they, like <laughs> they're on long service leave somewhere yeah. in New Zealand or something, you know, like <laughs> they're not coming back. No one wants to do this anymore. No, everyone wants to be a, a, a blogger or an influencer. Or what, <laughs> what do you call yourself those days, Brian? Hey, Brian's an influencer. Oh, I'm an <laughs> <bot man. laughs> Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm famous now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm an influencer. It's an influencer. So, but, the, you know, no one wants to be in the rain at 7 a.m. anymore. So we have to fix this. We have to be more productive with the same amount of resources that we've got. Now, what is the solution for this is if you, if you again, think of the car, if one person does one specific task, they – they're part of this journey to build a car without knowing the entire process how to build a car. Now that is panelized. That's prefab. So if I can pay anyone from the road, and we've proven this over and over again, I'll take on a new apprentice. I'll give them eight hours of introduction, and then I'll give them another eight hours on day two to kind of go. On, here's the here's how we do things. And on day three, they're fully integrated in production process. They're now successfully. Um, and, and supervised, of course, framing or membraning or insulating or whatever that is, because it doesn't matter. They don't need to be shit hot at it. They, they just do a part and do it really well. So that's the solution of it. You have to manufacture these things to create consistency. Otherwise, we will never move anywhere with it. You can't just go, let's throw billions at this and train people to do passive house or high performance on site. It won't work like that. It no, will, it will no. make it slower, which will drive our output overall as an industry down. So with the prefab, we can eliminate the, the need for skilled labor and skilled trades. Now we do that. We start making um, um, volume builders more profitable because we're fixing that issue for them. Now, if you fix that issue for them, they let's just they, they might care they might not we can't wait for this we just need to assume that they don't give a shit so if, with that in mind if you make them more profitable through speed they will take it yes, why wouldn't they, they? it's just good business and with that we now have got people mass manufacturing productivity goes up profitability goes up prices go down standard goes up emissions go down Hallelujah! That has to be the that has to be the solution. There is no other way. There is no other pathway of doing this. It's not going to happen on site. It has to be pre-manufactured, precision manufactured, so we can scale. Every product, every house is the same air type. It's the same insulation, the same details, and they can still look individual. They can still look fancy and whatnot. And and then we'll fix all the other issues uh, alongside it. So I don't I don't disagree with that. I think 
we're we're on that road. Like Sweden is the leaders in the industry. We know that they're. I think they're are they at like seventy eight percent pre manufactured homes in Sweden? They're yeah. Just under eighty. Yeah, I think. yeah. See, but they that, they they took our crown really. Like Germany was always it, and then we told <laughs> we told them how to do it. You know? Oh, here we <laughs> go. How they, they're claiming it. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> just not fair. But we will let them have it. What's Australia <laughs> at? Burkhart, you know, somewhere this. between six and ten. And it's it's, it really? it's ever evolving. Even yeah, that's high. Like well, that's higher was, than I thought it would be. But but it's it's that, that the, the numbers you got to look closely there. That is bathroom pots. That's tilt up panels. That's timber manufacturing. That's all the manufacturing. Anything that's pre manufactured is in there. So real like mm. uh, again, I'm I'm probably biased here, but well, mm. I am biased. Not probably. <laughs> um, but, but timber frame, you know, sustainably sourced kind of um, homes. Well, Look, very, let's, very let's low. Just, so the research I've done, we're somewhere between six and ten, and the reason they don't actually know. So I went through Bureau of Statistics, Australian Bureau of Statistics, um, some it's because of the industry where it's at right now. We're going through again, we're going through a seismic shift in how this works, and what you've just said, Burkhard, is on the money. You've hit the nail on the head. You provide a solution to these builders, they will take it because their risk is averted. It's it it the the problem or the challenge is making it affordable, right? Now, go back to some stats. What they expect by 2025 is that we're going to increase by somewhere somewhere between 7 and 15%. And we're not going to hit 7 to 15. We're going to increase what do, what by... Mean? Of modular what, what you, homes. Being, of, of, oh, yeah. of pre-manufactured homes. Now, that is pre-manufactured residential yeah. homes, be it timber, be it um, mm. sips, metal frame, anything that's pre-manufactured. And they're considering pre-manufactured to be timber frame manufactured walls so not you not stick frame anything that's manufactured in the factory and sent out be it flat panel be it panel light whatever it is they're considering them all to be pre-manufactured now mm. we could argue to the cows come home that that's not true but let's not go there it's a step mm. in the right direction oh my my question the, is sorry yeah no sorry it's the only direction there is i think yeah it is but the the, the question i have is how do we hit that target if, if we look at, we're, we're somewhere between 190 and 200 homes a year at the moment. That's what we're building on average. We know that's going to taper off. But if we're, if we're looking at that, what is that? It's, it's 20,000 20, homes. Odd. If we, if we sit somewhere between, let's call it 10%. If we're, if we're between 7 and 15, let's call it 10%. 10% of 200,000 is 20,000 homes. Hmm. Are we able to do that? Are we able to scale up? No. Nope. You know, just the, the scaling is is the easy part. That's the good news. Really? That, that, yeah. So it's, it's it's like needs a, capital, in, no doubt. I, I in, would disagree, well, man, course, because of, we've just been of, through, uh, like, uh, the rush that we've come through in the industry at the moment. Like, I don't know if I'm wrong here. Maybe, do see, we need more no, factories but, or that the current factories well, they, are able to carry that? See, the, the, the problem is that um, you – it's very capital intensive. So if yeah. you want to do this, and the, the 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 way is paved with manufacturers that died over the years. So, you know, like I am one of those. I am one of those guys that failed. I've tried yeah. this and I failed. Sorry, it... to, sorry to bring that up again. It's a raw nerve. You're such a prick. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, it wasn't. Look, it was it was a financial thing to yeah. have a factory. And to to maintain the finances that's required for the overhead Same. of a factory, you need to turn out in a certain amount of ho- homes every year. And in WA, yeah. it just at the time it wasn't possible to do a closed no. panel system. You you no, were... you probably struggle now. You're up against a giant over there, you know. But yeah. look, I I think the if if you there is room to scale, then the the actual scale now there's two parts of this. Actually, if you're saying I want to put out a thousand homes, okay, that's already done. That that is the, the systems for this are not impossible. Like where I'm from, you know, putting out a thousand homes a year, that's that's the easy bit. We can definitely do that. But businesses that supply in that sort of quantities, they are second, third generation. Yeah. They have gr- they have grown in this, right? There's the son's son that has reinvented, uh, reinvested, and made some profits and reinvested. Whereas you see a lot of businesses that do this over here, and I've spoken to all of them, and I like seriously, they 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 see something on grand design, and they sit down with machine suppliers, and then they go on like, yeah, let's go, oh. and they take out like five to eight million dollars, yeah, and and set up a production line. But the problem is they don't know what their product is. 
right? So you've got that many overheads. You go to, uh, then you have to go to a volume builder or to yeah. a developer and saying, give me 300 jobs and I'll make them for you. And they're going, oh, I want this. Even yeah, yeah. and they have to do it because and they will penny pinch as well. Like they, oh, will they, put you, they have to, yeah. they have to do this now because yeah. there is no other way. I need volume, yeah. but this mm. what they want may actually not work for your production line. See, yeah. with our background and that's the, the the team as well that I've got in the office that we know this stuff from back in Germany. We've developed a product first. And then we went to, okay, now how can we integrate this product into into your designs? Now, so we can, if this goes through, we know we can manufacture this thing. Solution-based product, yeah. Exactly, and not the other way around. And uh, so the, the other problem that, that I see, well, I guess a summary is we don't have really have the time, you know, because there's a sense of urgency yeah. to it now with the climate changing. But and and we've got this desperate need for homes. You know, we've got a hundred thousand people sleeping rough every night, and another four hundred thousand yeah. households being financially distressed. We're so the productivity has gone in in construction industry has gone down since the nineties. You know, in the nineties, you know what came out in the nineties? Nokia and the the, the Tamagotchi. Remember yes. those things? That came out in the 90s. So if you could see what technology is now, where we can implant, you know, microchips in our brains and, and whatnot, it, the technology has gone, has developed so far and productivity has gone through the roof. And at this in the same time frame, our productivity has gone down. That doesn't make any sense how we're not integrating tech into this. Mm. But that's that's the next business. I'm, I'm working on something right now where, we, where we're achieving exactly that because it, it just needs to solve a few more issues. So the the second problem that I see with this is that it, there is this disconnect between design, engineer, so building surveyor or certifier, banks, and then building. You know, so in yeah, very there's simple a lot of moving parts design, in it. That we find out the designer. Well. Did, yeah. But why is the question, right? Yeah. So the designer designs something that looks pretty, and they're going, mm -hmm. "All right, here you go." Puts this to the engineer. It's not the engineer engineer's job to go. Why does the upper floor, upper story floor kind of dangle sort of in, in no man's land and we now have to introduce steel beams or whatever it is? There's no load path yeah, yeah. Con considerations. They just engineer something <laughs> to make that design work. That goes into passive house analysis and you know, we need to shift it inside and thermally break it. And then the builder just simply puts numbers on it. But we're still the bad guys, aren't we? We're still... <laughs> yeah, we're yeah, still yeah guilty unto proven innocent because we kind of gone like, all oh, right, this is a uh, $600,000 home or 1 million. And they're going, what? Oh, the designer said it's half that. You know, so there's a disconnect between all of those things. My guys in the office, they're out on site and I'll, I'll force them to, I'm like, if you engineer this thing and you model this, I want you to understand what this is on site. So they fixing problems because they're exposed to them. You know, can you imagine what would happen if you dragged the designer out on site and the engineer and going like, here's a hammer. We'll put this thing up now. Well done on your design work. Off we go. And they're going like, oh, man, this box got all this detail. This is really a pain in the ass. I'm not going to do that again because mm. it's so labor intensive that it's expensive. But we don't. We did. We It's a disconnect. And with that disconnect, you see this echoing through and that's why it's so bumpy and so slow. And it takes people sometimes two years to go through planning and building permit and get a building on site. That's insane. Can, can I say insane. one thing, Burkhard? Only if it's I'm, English. I, I'm going to give a little bit of kudos here to one particular company. So what you're describing there, it's very typical of um, individual homes and one-off custom homes, especially. Yeah. When we're when we're talking about the project industry or the mainstream industry, like with the larger builders, there's one company um, over here in Western Australia in particular, and they've been through the ringer with COVID and everything. That's Offsite. I'm sure you're aware of Offsite, right? Yeah, I am. Yeah. So Offsite was pioneered by a really good mate of mine years ago, and yeah. the first four houses off his line were mine, right? Yeah. Now we always knew. We sat down and had a beer about this, and we spoke that he would not be manufacturing my houses forever because it wasn't financially viable. He needed yeah. to get units off the line since then what they have achieved is nothing short of incredible yeah and i, I, I follow to, them yeah so these guys have now taken the project industry in western australia by storm and they've done mm. it methodically so they know that individual houses doesn't work 
right? Mm. So they've gone to the industry and they've gone particularly in targeted, targeted small lot terraced homes. So we all know repetitive manufacturing makes money. Mm. Less design, less headaches. It's repetitive um, yes. run through the factory. And your systems, you know, the more you do a system, the more refined it gets. You know this, Burkhardt. These guys have absolutely smashed it out of the park, mm. right? They're now doing large terrorists. Sorry? I remember I was talking about in COVID when you were yeah. like, oh, man. God. I, thought I, they, like I, I honestly thought they were going to go under during COVID. They, they, had, yeah. they really struggled. But when you go and see what this factory is doing now. Anyway, my point is that if there's a prime example of hitting the industry, you know, at speed, methodically, and making the product work financially, then it's there. Yeah. It's right yeah. there. It, it, for me, I've seen oh. it, how they do it. It's incredible. They they, yeah. they now have like all of those terrorist homes that's going on in, in Perth right now. These guys yeah. are doing it and they're yeah. smashing them out. So yeah. it can be done. Absolutely. It can be done. hundred percent. hundred percent. It has been done before. We're not like, we're, we're not doing anything new here or different. No, we're not whether unicorn it anywhere. <laughs> whether that's, whether that's efficiency or it's, it's um, output, you know, um, or uh, thermal performance or it's output and quantities. None of that is new. It's just, it's all been done before. We yeah. just need to, that's, it's the, this is sort of the, uh, the isolation in Australia is a bit of a problem. I think sometimes we, you know, it, Europe is, it's extremely competitive, you know, because there's different countries. Then one country comes up with something new and the other one has to follow, you know, there, it's, there's competition. Whereas we are a little bit far removed from things over here, you know, which is not working in our advantage. But no, no, there's, it, there's, there's lots of, there's, there's a huge amount of people in the industry that are pushing for change though and positive change. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes, we might yeah, be disadvantaged because of where we are in the world, but at the same time, I wouldn't say we're underachievers either. No, I know. I'm not like, saying that. Absolutely yeah, well, not. Our industry is pushing very, very hard, and I'm very happy with the direction we're going, particularly with – so, you know, I'm an avid passive house builder, but at the same time, I've got my ear – I've got my pulse elsewhere. Like, with these things that I'm doing with TAFE, et cetera, mm. I understand that, like, passive house is the answer, but passive house, in my opinion, is not achievable for everybody right now. Mm. It will be yeah. eventually. But right now, we've yeah. got a process that Europe has gone through for the past 15 years that we need to condense. So we mm. need to take that 15-year process and condense it down to five, in my yes. opinion. And it's, it's, it's how we condense that with mitigating risk. And Offsite is a t- prime example. You are a prime example of how to do that. Mm. Um, it's just how do we upscale more quickly mm. to make it a, that, that product viable? Yeah. I think that's, that's probably one of the biggest questions. And the NCC is one of the biggest drivers behind all of this. Yeah. Like if if the industry doesn't need to change, it won't. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah, I I could say some stuff here, but I won't. <laughs> I'll get in trouble. <laughs> oh come on like now. <laughs> well, no. I, I I agree with you. I, I guess the um, yeah. I don't know what's coming next. I don't want to get it too far ahead with your questions. So should we just keep talking here? Yeah. Just keep talking. It's to... a conversation. Yeah. See, I um, the the. The NC, if the industry doesn't need to change, they won't. I, I agree with that statement. Um, but right now they have to because, and it's not sustainability. That's also, and unfortunately, um, we've done, we've got projects with um, larger builders coming up. And, you know, after the recent dramas they've gone through and, you know, sh- shareholders injecting cash and whatnot, I 100% guarantee you that sustainability is the first one to go. If they can yeah. throw it out, they Every will. Week. And yeah. it's and so th- then again, I'm not too upset about it because I can work with that. If I'm nowhere I'm at, if yeah. it, then then I can work with that. So what's the pain point? How can I fix this for you? And it is the lack of labor, the the fact that I can't get anything out of the ground, and it is money. Now, if it's driven by money and by shareholders and the capitalist system, I don't agree with it, but I can work with it. Yeah, like yeah. I can fix I can fix that. Yeah. So I make them fast and make them profitable, then the outcome will be irrelevant. And at the same time, the 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 NCC is almost ir- irrelevant because you you Simon and, and, and myself we're, like we're we're pioneers, right? We're bashing our head against a brick wall till this thing gives way. You know, so we don't care. I have never cared about the the NCC catching up or, you know, oh, should I do this or shouldn't I do this? I fought fights with large suppliers. They said, oh, you can't use that. And I said, yeah, well, but I want ventilation between the studs and the, the, the membrane 
externally and the cladding. They said, no, no, direct fix. And I said, okay, well, look, I don't care. I'll sign off on this because I'm much more comfortable signing off on something that I know works versus something that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So in short, I've never really, I, I'm not the one, and I think pioneers, we don't, we don't ask for permission. We just do it anyway. There will be people behind us that will, you know, pushing in the right direction. And I guess there's a lot of people change, pushing for this change, which is necessary, but it will take time, just time consuming. And that again, me and my patients, we don't, <laughs> we're not the most suitable people <laughs> for that task. Can but, I stop um, you there for one second? Uh, yeah. If you I, have I, to. I completely agree with you, but at the same time, <laughs> I, I realized a couple of years ago, like being in Western Australia, and I'm, yeah, here comes the excuses. It's a much more difficult fight. We're fighting a bigger beast here in Western Australia. And yeah. I realized years ago. You fight like, the concrete this, industry. That's, yeah, a, like, that's one. <laughs> it's the brick industry, really. We're fighting brick, the brick yeah. industry. So that's, I wouldn't say it's a losing battle, but I did realize a few years ago that if we're going to incite change here, I'm not going to do it by being a pioneer. Absolutely not. We yeah. need to have fingers in a few pies. And that's why my approach is slightly different. It's like, right, I will push ahead and I will be, call it a pioneer, call it whatever you like, but I will do what I, what I do to the best of my ability. And I will push hard in that direction. I will push for passive house. But at the yeah. same time, I've got all this other shit that's going on in the background with the likes of TAFE and the likes of all these other agencies, including the NCC, where I will put along with, uh, proclaiming we will put our our submission together to lobby for change you know what i mean yeah but the, have my... see you but by pioneering you're still pioneering hmm. it's just it requires all of us you know there were there was this this quote where it says we're going to have to do everything a lot of it at, at all at the same time or something along those lines and it's not just it manufacturing is one part design is one part engineering yeah. is one part tafe is one part like yeah. it needs it needs all of us to do this obscene amount of work and really get out of our comfort zone and fighting those losing battles because they're not losing battles. They just feel like losing battles sometimes, you know? So it's like, mm -hmm. then you go to the conferences yeah. and, uh, you know, and the sustainable um, builders um, alliance uh, that, uh, night that we had the other day and you go, yeah. shit, I'm, I'm not alone here. You know, yeah. like I've, this is what this is all about. We are not losing. We're just we're moving through it. But the grassroots work is done, and it's hard, and it's hideous. It's like eating glass, you know. It's like startup <laughs> feel to it. Mm. So, but you know, you you might be pioneering the work on TAFE, which is brand new. There's no rule book there. We haven't done this before. So mm. that pioneer work. Then there's people pioneering in manufacturing. People pioneering in other areas. It all has to be done at the same time. Yeah. So it's not one way is right and the other one isn't. They all have to be done and have to be done now, which is a challenging bit, I guess. I think our progression is going to take patience is probably one of the biggest things. If we're patient with our progression oh, and we don't so rush it too much. But again, Burkhard, you're not very patient. That's why, I, this is just why I let you do the talking. <laughs> you, you need patience in this industry. But, but like Burkhart mentioned before, like yeah, his apprentices and trades people, once they've seen the light, you can't yeah, go back. About and that's no, the three yeah. of us sitting here. We could stick to you know, what we're doing, but we're like, we, we, we see the bigger picture and we're trying to carry or bring the others along with us because and there is a great want for to build better and people re recognize <laughs> it now i think that's the big shift brian yeah. um but, but yeah the, i think there is there's definitely a roadblock here though and oh, absolutely. it's, there's, it's, there's it's no not being discussed about like that, if we we know <laughs> we can do it as an industry but we still have to service the industry so we still need first home buyers a first home buyer needs to get into the market and it can't be without, it can't be out of reach. Otherwise, you create a system that's un, unstable and unsustainable. So, like while the project builders are delivering homes that we say are, you know, they're they're not efficient, right? And yeah. they may not be healthy. Let's not say they're not. Let's just say they may not be healthy. But at the same time, we need to provide homes. Yeah. And we need yeah. to provide a certain amount of homes every year. So when I say there's patience in progression, it's it's that's the patience. We still need to deliver. But slowly, we need to, you know, increase the health impacts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Affordability. That's, that's for me is the challenge. On. And yeah. affordability is touching. Affordability is it's a huge, it's huge. It's a huge thing. We we can't just turn around and tell that industry that supplies the majority of first home buyers. We can't turn around and send them. Oh, you guys need to have seven stars now, and you need to be sustainable, and you need to have healthy building fabric, and you need to have all this. We know they do, but we can't turn around and tell them that they have to deliver that overnight. Nah. The price will go up. Right. And at the moment, the financial stress that 
the country is under, the world is under, for that matter. Mm -hmm. Serviceability is an issue. So if you increase a first home by 50 grand or 40 grand or 30 grand, yeah. then you're going to lock out a, a huge amount of first home buyers. Yeah, mm. yeah, nah. So then nah, we end up in a shitstorm. You know what I mean? Ignorance, so, to some degree, we've got to keep doing what we're doing. Ignorance is, is bliss. Push it. Yeah. Push. We know, we know what we've got to push. Yeah. Keep pushing it. And this um, is yeah, this is my whole reason by saying what I'm doing in the background with TAFE and all of these. It's that consideration with Master Builders and HIA yeah. and all these other guys. We have to talk to these guys. Yeah. Mm. But, if, go, if, but going back, sorry, with Burkhart, the, the solution of pre manufactured, it is. Yeah. Clearly, the solution on the mass scale, but let's yeah, absolutely, let's, let's have at it. Yeah, yeah, and the and the, there's in a in a smaller scale. This is what we um, what we what we do now. You know, I was talking to Hamish about this the other day, and I said, oh, you know, we're looking at some of his projects, and I said, oh, I wondered when you come out of the honeymoon period. You know, me <laughs> because the. <laughs> what I mean by that is that, you know, you, you do your certification and then you go out and you go like, oh, we're going to do it all ourselves. And everyone's excited that you insulate and you put the membranes on and the first blower door test and you're going, oh, my God, that's just brilliant. We'll do another one and then one is certified. And then you, it, the excitement about the certification kind of wears off a little, just a little bit, because you're kind of going healthy is really what we should be focusing on, yes. but causing causing a lot of headaches just for another kilowatt hours to better or, or a plaque on the wall hmm. may not be the solution. And yeah. then it wears off and there's another few builders and they're all your generation or the couple after in the running through the course. They kind of went through, I, I've framed a few of them now, I've built a few of them now. Now we, we have, we, it's, it, it's, it's difficult to get carpenters and then the, the predictability, sorry, predictability on price, you know, so for a plumber, you get a locked in price for an electrician, you get a locked in price for a plasterer. And that's why a lot of them, we, we shift now to, to enable builders to deliver more. Yeah, yeah. That's what we see our role on panelized role is it's an enabler. I want you to do more with less effort and more yeah, yeah. predictability. Mm. That's what we do individualized homes. And that's what we set up to, to deliver. You know, and because there's still a degree of complexity to airtight homes more yeah. than, you know, sort of mass market buildings, I guess. But that's mm -hmm. that's what we're shifting. And um, th this is where the work is done, you know, where you then see, um, I always like to use uh, Sanctuary as an example, you know, as a magazine. Yeah, yeah. Um, went from in, in within a super short time, there is not one edition anymore that hasn't got one a passive house or a story about a passive house in it. It, yeah. it just yeah. and it was always environmentally conscious, but it came yeah. like a rapid pace from oh, it was a juggernaut, tank. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a water tank and solar PV, and people going, "Wow, you know, well done." Yeah. But that was sustainable to uh, high performance and and the, and the lot, which is brilliant. So mm. the change is happening, but you guys really need to learn how to be patient, seriously, because. <laughs> 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 It's 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 All happening. Right. We're just going to move on. And listen, I need it. to ask you something, Matt, because we are we're going to run out of time. We need we've got to sure. go in about 15, 20 minutes. Um, one of the things I'm I'm on a journey at the moment uh, to become carbon neutral. Can you tell me, give us, tell us about your story and why you did it and what you achieved by doing it? So you are a carbon neutral company. T talk us through that, please. Um, it, it, carbon neutral neutrality just makes good business sense, right? Yep. So again. I am a huge fan of data. Like anything that I can measure and analyze, I can improve. Mm -hmm. Everything else is just guesswork. Now, the actual um, carbon neutral certificates, there's different certifications out there. Some of them I find quite disappointing, again, because I I, I, I like to set the standard very high. So mm -hmm. if it's just money in an account where they're kind of saying, oh, now you offset your emissions. It's and the kind of greenwashing. Yeah. It's exactly, right? Yeah. And I'm glad you said it because I wasn't going to, but. It now is. Though, that's there. what it is. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. And it's it's money in an account to a feel good plaque and which yeah. is complete bollocks, you know. So yeah. but what we then did, we took it a lot further and went like, what's in the bin? What's timber? How much is plastic? Where, how much water are we using? How often do we drive to side? And then yeah. how much power do we use? And, and all these things. So it, all of a sudden you can then go. I mean, we, we, can we improve this? And this is credit to the team. I mean, they are relentless at this. You know, they're so ridiculously committed 
to the course, not just we're not building homes. We're we're, we're changing. We're transforming the industry. That's what we. Yeah. That's sort of the the war cry there, and the. They, they got it down to like below one percent in in wastage for um for material so now we're in the transition towards um ev vans so we're lowering the emissions of people that um you know, when they travel then you you put solar pv on the on the factory roof so you generate your own power yeah. to manufacture so you have to actually follow through but yeah. you know the old saying if someone holds up a mirror you mustn't be afraid to look. You actually got to look at your own actions and your own impact. Yeah, uh, and 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 drive this way. There's another really good book which is um, uh, Net Positive, yeah. which is became sort of my my bible. That that if we don't generate or create business that is good for people, for planet, and then and profits, it, it will it will have no future. This this is our, our big, yeah. it, it just in in not long from here, you will we will have to be net positive all of us. Yeah. And we've all gonna have to be very resilient because things the weather will get fierce and things will be underwater at a regular base. So it's a pretty grim picture, but I always like being realistic because then I can brace myself for that. And if it doesn't happen, then I'm gonna be pretty happy, I guess. Um there's one question I wanna ask you. Um so you are still um a lecturer for the tradesperson course. Tell us a little yes. bit about that, because anyone that's in, and this is, we're not necessarily focused on Passive House, but it's interesting for me, when we, like, I've done it with you, Hamish has done it, and most of the people I know have done it with you. How, how did you end up as, as a lecturer, and why do you still do it? That was brilliant. Oh, yeah. I was invited by the, um, by Box Hill Institute, and they said, oh, look, here's what this one want to do. We set up a Passive House course, and I'm sitting there and listening to them for, like, in half an hour, an hour, and I go, cool. Well, that sounds brilliant, but forgive me. Why am I here? <laughs> All right. And they and they went like. So well, this wasn't like... instigated by the Passive House Institute. No, no, no. That 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 was Box Hill. Box Hill has been always been the 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 right the, the, the shining light there on this. Okay. And so they they pay for me to fly over to Germany, um, <laughs> to do this training course, yeah. um, with the Passive House Institute, and um. You know, it was just weird because I go, what, what do you want me to do? You mean, I barely speak English. You know, people who struggle to understand me. You know what I'm talking about, Brian. You, <laughs> yeah. you have the same issue. We did but, have a couple know, of lunches and had a bit of a laugh about that, actually. <laughs> yeah, and then the, I flew over there and I, I met uh, a couple of Irish guy, a couple of Italian guy. Brilliant. Like, we went out after the course. It was wild. It was fantastic. Yeah. But the, so I got my certification, came back, and it was just me and I think me and Claire. We would be yeah, only certified right. people, people, people to deliver this course in the southern hemisphere. Yeah, we got like, if we're talking about a losing battle. You know, <laughs> how about that one? So, and then we started going through it. I mean, we made the decision. For me, it has always been about impact, yeah. not the money. Money is nice and buys this thing. That's fantastic. But money for me is petrol in the car. I um, don't buy a car to put petrol in it. I need petrol to drive this car, but it's not the reason why I purchased a car just so I can fuel it up. You know, that, that no one does that. That's the same what money does in a business. You need money to grow and sustain and pay and, and reinvest and whatnot, but it's not the driving cause. For me, it was always about the impact. Very cheesy line. I get it, mm -hmm. but that's the truth. That's why I get up and that's why I get out of bed in the morning. And the, the most amount of impact is exactly the reason what you do in TAFE. You're like, I had yeah. to get others on board. I had to yeah. grow the market and actually grow the niche. There's people that criticized me very harshly early on because they went like, oh, just be quiet. You, you dominate the market. You know, because there was no market, there was no other player. Yeah, I, you're, you're I, creating I, a market to work in. I, like I owned that space. There was no one the there. Yeah. And then all of a sudden there was others. And I said, no, no, wait. You know, this is going to take a few years. But if we, other builders would take this on, there's more people advertising, more people talk about it more people capable of doing this. And then from a selfish perspective, ultimately, I think we are going to, I've seen this in Germany, no one is going to build on site anymore. Everyone is going to pre-manufacture. Yeah, yeah. So, And I'm going to be one of these manufacturers. So I planted the seed years ago for what I believe would come and would happen. And that's why yeah. I still do it because and it's, it's awesome. I mean, I mean, we met through it, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, did, just, I, I have to admit, I did... I did the tradesperson course and I thought the vibe in the room was always positive and always progressive. It was fantastic. 
Now I did the designer course. Yeah. It was a completely different vibe. Bunch of downers, yeah. was it? Sorry? Yeah. Bunch of bunch of downers. <laughs> no, no. No, I, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. Um look, there were more I academics. You were saying that. Yeah. Like Please trades... explain yourself now. They're all listening now. Go on. <laughs> the tradesperson course was practical people. The uh. the um designer course was academics. Mm-hmm. And I'm like wearing my heart my sleeve. I'm not an academic person as mm-hmm. such. I'm more of a material person or a um Did you know that there is there is no practical session to the Passive Health Tradesperson course. I know. We made that up. We made that up. We just, <sighs> I said, I'll, I'll, I've got to actually, do something. Um, on the last on the last day, I've got to get them to the factory and get at least get some membrane on the wall, for God's sake, you know? Yeah. It's, it's made up. It's because, and I, and I said, so, because they, they said to me, you can't take him out of the classroom, you know, health and safety, da 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 And I said, look, I told you from day one, I'm not a teacher. <laughs> I don't care. So I've got a problem with authority. Let's go. We're going. <laughs> we're going. And we made it up, and it was brilliant. And then all of a sudden, that like, fantech joined in, and they are still coming today and t- t- teaching people, you know, and yeah. um, doing blower door testing. So this certification has to mean something. That's why I'm fiercely against um, online courses for practical things. It's ridiculous how we think that we can deliver the same quality in an online course. Everyone, we, we, we're going to end up flooding the market with people that are signed up for fees that have got their certificate that people believe in and trust them, but they don't have any experience. So it's worthless when they come to side. Yeah, you that's know, the, the, that's society, though. That's where we're at in society. Yeah. Look, I will we're, say one thing, though. Doing the designer course really cemented Passive House for me. So when I did the tradesperson course, I got it. But I yeah. would say it was an introduction and it's good yeah. enough. If you're a builder or a tradesperson, it is definitely good enough. But yeah. as a registered builder, yeah, my advice would be to go and do the designer course. I would say, um, yeah. I did it and I learned. I learned so much more. And now, when I sit down with a client to do consultation of any kind with Passive House, yeah. I have a lot more knowledge than what I had if I did the tradesperson course. That's all yeah. I was really, say. really, really talking down my course now, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, that took it yeah. too quickly, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I commend you for what you do, mate. To be honest, to be yeah. running a business, manufacturing, be a registered Thank builder, you. and give those courses. It's incredible, man. It's absolutely incredible what you're doing. It's busy. Yeah. Look, it's we're busy. running out of time. So quickly, can I ask you? Um, do the fun uh, questions. What? You had the fun questions on the bottom, didn't you? No, no, no. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I got one more sticky one for you, right? So, oh, dear. you being one of the goats of the industry, or the goat of the industry. If you could change the NCC, you could make it. You had a silver bullet. What would it be, Burkhard? Mm. See, I, I, I think I, I touched on this earlier. I'm a firm believer that you don't need to change this to achieve positive change. Like mm-hmm. people that know, like you and I, we know this now. We, we, we've seen the light and we're kind of going, okay, well, there's a reliability issue. So I can't build, not build airtight or no ventilation. Um, so we, whether the NCC supports us or not, we're going to go with a head through the wall and we're going to get this done. Like you will not, if the NCC doesn't change, you will not stop teaching the young people because you believe in it. Right. So the positive, the, the good people, the positive side of things will always happen. I would simply would like to see something more regulation that prevents the bad stuff, you know? So you, you need to have the a proper, uh, rules about ventilation and about air tightness. Like, we're on the right path now, you know, but using the example of a, of a car again, there has to be standards. How safe is safe? How, what, what that baseline I'd like to see a healthy building baseline in the code that we have certain components in there that have to be fitted in a home to ensure healthy. Now, passive house, no passive house, but throw out the band, the greenwash of double glazing non-thermally broken in an aluminium frame because it's double glazing are you kidding me like that's that's ridiculous so ban the bullshit get rid of the bollocks and the, the good stuff will take over anyway you will we see we will see businesses popping up left right and center doing blower door testing ventilation units super, you know membrane suppliers and people specializing in things because it's supported the other stuff will die out. You need to support, you need to take that off life support, flick the switch 
and shut the shit down so that the good stuff, the new generation can thrive. That's what I would do. Mm. Okay, interesting. I don't know how the know, NCC would do that, but yes. Don't word it like that. No, I get it. I get it. I completely understand it. And everyone's singing from the same hymn sheet. Everyone has different opinions, but the message is the same. Like, yeah. essentially, the message is the same. It's the NCC yes. need to get her off their ass, fix the, the, the moisture management issues, and with energy efficiency, like you said, take the shit yeah. off life support, get rid of it, and move on. Oh, mate, That's just going to be – it's a time thing. That's a process. And make this Australian standards available for free. Are you joking? Like yeah, the, shit, yeah. I don't understand that. That for you me have to is find a joke. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, that I, I don't like, understand. I understand it has to be maintained, but come on. Like, there's enough yeah. money coming out of the industry to support that. Yeah. Like, seriously, right. give it to everyone for free. Yeah, it like, props up ten percent of the country's GDP. Construction does. <laughs> like, sure. let's um, let's not give them something that they require, that they need, yeah. that you're they pushing need. on them. Yeah. It's yeah. a risk. It's a liability issue. Like seriously, that's it is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Like, come on. Man. Anyway, all right. One, I've one other quick question for you, Simon. Have you got some? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. Okay, so one other one, um, and this is a personal one f for you, uh, Burkhard. Um, how do you feel the industry as a whole is doing with respect to manufacturing? So, are we doing okay? Are we shit? Are we? How do you think I, we're doing? I I think my my lack of patience will probably um, blow my judgment on this a bit. Um, I think we, the, the, the industry is doing as good as it can and they can't do, you can't scale up more until we fix the disconnect between design, engineering and manufacturing. You fix that up like, like um, Offside has successfully done and yeah. you, you start streamlining and you're putting them out at scale. It's not, you can't blame one manufacturer saying, oh, well, you, more people should be investing. There's no lack of that. You know, a strong build uh -huh. or whatever else the names are, put millions of dollars into that. People have taken massive risk, massive amounts of money, and they've failed. Why? Let's look at why this is failing and fix that. And I believe that is the disconnect in the design stage and the engineering stage and the manufacturing and the builders. It, you, you, you find a pathway to connect these and it will flourish anyway. And then there is no one one person to single out. Are we doing okay right now? Absolutely not. I mean, Jesus, we're so far behind on the output that we should, in the homes that we should be putting out to get rid of the crisis and that will drive the price down. So this is the solution. We're not doing okay for what we could be doing, but that's only because we haven't reached our potential yet. Okay. So it seems obvious now that you say it, like obviously the having good design it, like, and, and that connection with pre-manufactured with, with a builder it's mm. it's it's obviously that you can't have one without the other no <laughs> really. it's a collaboration yeah but if you look like again sorry but if you look at what offsite have achieved once that connection is made and once there is a trust between the builder and the manufacturer okay. it's a done deal yeah it's, it's a, absolute, the, 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 the builder will come at the start and say we have this site and we want to put this many houses on it. An offset will come and say, these are the houses, the most cost-effective, high-efficient house that we can put on that block. How yeah. do you like that? That's per perfect. The, yeah. the offset are doing the design. Offset are doing the engineering. Offset mm -hmm. are doing the panels, systems, yeah. deliveries, everything. It's it's a solutions-based approach. Mm. That I think that's the difference. And that, that for me, might be the key. The, the manufacturer is providing the solutions. That, that um, I think, is the difference, I think. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want to go funny questions now? Funny or fun? Yeah. Fun questions. Okay, all right, let's do it. Who's sure. the most famous person in your phone book? Oh, see, Obama's going to be upset if I tell you guys. <laughs> but, you know, he's not president anymore, so who cares? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, would, it would have to be, it would have to be uh, Steve Hooker, the, the gold medalist, the Paul yeah, Volcker. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I would have thought you would have said Claire. Claire. Perry? Yeah. She's pretty famous. No, I, I went for a gold medalist, mate. I, yeah. I didn't... Gold medalist probably <laughs> just got it. A... Yeah. Sorry. Right. Sorry. Sorry, Claire. If you listen to this, Claire, there's nothing <laughs> I just threw you under the bus. You mm. take a five meter long pole and jump six meters high. Absolutely. I will, That's pretty I will, special. I'll take Steve out of my favorite list. <laughs> <laughs> favorite sporting team. It would it would have to be the Australian um, 
female soccer team after the World mm. Cup. That's yeah, insane. They are going real well. They actually played yes. the Perth last night, and they're playing again. Love this. it. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. What yeah. that's done to what's that done to the to FIFA and the world and young girls watching yeah. this is insane. I was in the stadium twice. I couldn't get enough of it, man. Like it's yeah, that was brilliant. Sam Kerr is a pioneer, an absolute yeah. pioneer, man. She is insane, so it? good. It's, it's, and yeah, then six hundred grand a year. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like so underpaid. Equality is nowhere near what it should no, be with maybe those Maybe she's guys. not underpaid. Oh maybe on everyone else is so ridiculously overpaid. You know yeah. that we created mm. divas. It's insane. Anyway. Um, passive house or passive solar design? <laughs> Neither, if I had to choose. <laughs> like it'll be, it would be, it will be a passive solar design with passive house principles. Yeah, that's the one. That's yeah. the magic. That's what happens. I, I would it's agree not... with you there. I would agree with you. Yeah. It's an amalgamation of both. Uh, timber or brick? Oh, Jesus. Next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a stupid question coming at you, isn't it? Yeah. Put that in there. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite music? Um, when I, um, actually, my wife introduced me to a, um, an app. It's, it's Listener app or something. And it's a thing, if you look it up, Listener app, and in the app, you look, you look for Blender Beats. It is the best. It just has like 90s, 80s, 2000s, all mixing. It's like yeah, a DJ right. is constantly mixing them up. It is fantastic. So I've had blasting whilst I'm working. It's, been, it's amazing. <laughs> Tim Tam or Anzax? It would have to be the Tim Tam, but the white ones. I'm not big on the, the other, the yeah, dark right. chocolate. White I Tim thought Tam. you were going to back me with the Anzac. White Tim Tams. <laughs> No, see, there's the war thing. You know, I'm not, yeah, I'm German. I'm not allowed nice. to, I have yeah. to stay neutral. I can't, anything war related, I have to stay out of it. Yes. Uh, well, look, Burkhardt, what an incredible conversation. Thank you so much for joining and sharing your fun. details, man, of your journey. Fun. It was so good. Um, it's no secret, man, you are the GOAT and you're the lean, leading pioneer. We know that. And you say you don't have to be a market leader to lead the market. That's just one of the phrases that you coin quite often. And you are yeah. so right. I, I, I completely agree with that. Um, I don't think there's anyone in the passive house industry that doesn't know you, uh, I would say safely. But I think the passive house industry... Is that a industry, good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> it's a good thing. But I think the passive house industry is probably going to lose you to the to the greater good. I think you're going to be a huge influence in the industry as a whole, not necessarily just for Passive House, but for, you know, leading sustainability and leading the industry to, you know, better solutions with pre-manufactured construction. And there'll be a lot of people that will follow in your footsteps. Really yeah, appreciate, appreciate what that. you're doing, man. I really, really well, thank do. You. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And that was good fun. And the same to you, man. Like this pioneer work is hard and, um, it is, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's unforgiving, um, it's punishing, but it's necessary. So, um, very kind words. So I appreciate that. Man. And then, yeah. um, next time when you're over on uh, my turf, you uh, <laughs> you make sure you come in. And... <laughs> I'll have a beer with you for sure, man. <laughs> we'll have a drink. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, thanks, anyway, everyone, for listening. Um, thanks again to all our sponsors. Uh, it's been fantastic. Really, really, we're we're getting a lot of feedback on the the podcast and the webinars. Don't forget webinar next week coming up. Um, with Hamish, uh, it's going to be your absolute ripper. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, again, Simon, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Burkhardt, for joining me. And we'll see you all in the next one. Thanks, boys. Thanks, Burkhardt. Thanks. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. See you guys. See, see you, gents.